Starting on May 15th, the Beijing police were serving a 100-day campaign to crack down foreigners who live, work, and travel in China illegally. That's according to the Beijing Public Security Bureau. Media report that officials in Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan Province, and Yanbian in Jilin Province are rolling out similar actions. Are these actions isolated moves or rooted in a deeper social and cultural and legislative context? Let's hear what people say first. I just heard that they check better, like the passport and visa of like foreign people on the street. I've been living in Beijing since since two weeks, and my mother and father already told me to go to the police to make the uh, you know uh, the paper. Has the action affected your life in any way? But I don't think really because uh, I'm student. I still spend all my time in my school and. I don't go a lot of time out of the school. No, I haven't seen anything yet. Actually, what I do, I actually do carry my passport.、Uh, so it's I didn't used to do that, but now I actually do. It doesn't influence anyway. I think I always bring my documents with me. For example, I have to register with the police to tell exactly where I'm living, and if I leave the the place I'm living at, I have to go tell the police and notify them where I'm going to be staying. What do you think about their action?、Uh, well, I. I don't really understand why、uh, now it's、uh, more severe than before. I think it's a very difficult、uh, condition because、uh, I, all I'm doing, I'm in my second year in China, but、uh, they never ask me and about my paper, and it's sometimes so difficult to bring your paper with you because you forget it. I think it's pretty normal because in my country, in France, like police also checks immigrants' paper. I don't see police much in China. I mean. Usually in France we have a lot of police everywhere, but in here I don't see it so much. I think it's okay. If it's not too much all the time on the, in the corner of the street, I think.、Uh, I think it's the right thing to do. I totally agree with it. Well, I think maybe it's a bit excessive, maybe, for、uh, that to blame all the foreigners for the action of one person. I know it's just like track, tracking down all the foreigners for、uh, for the action of one person just seems like I know it's not very fair. What do you think to be the reason behind it?、Uh, I have no idea. There are different rumors on it, but、uh, as far as I read it, it's just the officials want to check the documents and really want to bring、uh, down this illegal immigration. I guess it comes from this like recent event of、uh, this British guy trying to rape a girl on the street, and now they just want to check better about foreigners. Coming in China. What do you think about this action? I think it's fine. 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 I 我觉得外国人在中国也就是普通的人群嘛，我们就只能把它当做一个进入到中国的人而已。我觉得的话，每个国家的话都是会采取一些，呃，对于在本国滞留的外国人的一些合法的行为。那您认为北京，呃，警方这次行动背后的原因是什么？应该是出于现在目前社会现在的压力吧，有一些现在社会出现的事儿也挺多的，就是现在有些这些。三非的人，他们在这儿没有固定的收入，也没有固定工作，有些在这儿来捣乱社会治安，所以我挺支持这事儿的。就前一段时间那个宣武区那个强奸那个中国中国女子的就那个事儿，其实很多时候他，你别把他看作是外国人，他其实就是一个很普通的案件。那么中国人，你觉得他？嗯，很多中国人感觉很愤慨嘛。其实我觉得愤怒的并不是说外国人对我们中国人如何，其实很多时候愤怒的是。对政府的一种失望啊，或者是怎么样？就是说，中国人可能没有人家外国人有权利。我觉得那个是个呃事情的一个呃诱因吧。现在的话，这个事情发生了，可能大家对于在中国的很多这个外国人，他可能非法拘留或者从事一些非法活动的话，这个问题引起了更呃更更深的关注。我觉得这还可和那个国际的那个大环境有关系。比如说，有些有些人他可能是。嗯，就是间谍啊这些的，我觉得。那您平常对在北京呃生活的外国人印象怎么样？嗯，我认为啊，总体我接触的外国人都还我身边的吧，还好一些吧。其实我接触到大多的外国人还是挺友好的，呃，层次也是层次不齐。
呃，大部分都是好的，但是有一些可能也是，呃，就是在国外就是比较混的那种。From street interviews, we found many people mention one incident when asked what they think to be the reason behind police crackdown. A recap of the event might give you more ideas. According to China Daily reports. A British tourist was suspected of sexually assaulting a Chinese woman on Xuanwu Men Dajie in Beijing at about 11 p.m. on May 8. The man's actions were caught on video and then posted online. The video shows the woman crying out in distress and saying she doesn't know the foreign man. A few Chinese men came to the woman's aid after they heard her calls. They beat the British tourist, who was then lying in the middle of the road. Millions of people watched the video, and tens of thousands have expressed their outrage online. A week later, the Beijing police issued a 100-day campaign to check passports and accommodation registration in areas where foreigners gather in Beijing. The interval between the two events was so short that many couldn't help think one caused the other. But China Daily reported that the police denied that idea and said the crackdown. Only aims at tackling the illegal employment of foreigners, outstaying an illegal entry. After all, the police said the suspected British man involved in the incident does have a valid visa. But why start the crackdown now? How serious is the problem of illegal immigrants in China? Let's look at some numbers. According to the Ministry of Public Security, foreign visitors made about 54 million trips to the Chinese mainland in 2011. They came to China for various purposes like tourism, business and conference, employment, study and reuniting with friends and families. Beijing alone holds an average of 200,000 foreigners per day. That's according to the city police. The ten countries that sent the most visitors to China in 2011 were the Republic of Korea, Japan, Russia, the United States, Malaysia, Singapore. Vietnam, Mongolia, the Philippines, and Canada. China's latest census shows the top ten Chinese regions that receive most foreign residents are Guangdong Province, Shanghai Municipality, Beijing Municipality, Jiangsu Province, Fujian Province, Yunnan Province, Zhejiang Province, Shandong Province, Liaoning Province, and Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region. About 740,000 foreigners entered China in 1980. The number grew 36 times, that to over 27 million in 2011. In 1980, there were 20,000 foreigners that lived in China for more than six months. That number went up to 600,000 in 2011, representing a 30-time increase. These long-term residents were mainly employees of foreign-funded enterprises. Students, teachers, and representatives of foreign companies, as well as their relatives. As of the end of 2011, about 4,700 foreign residents held China's permanent residence. Chinese police dealt with 10,000 foreigners leaving work and traveling illegally in 1995. That number doubled in 2011. The ministry reported most illegal immigrants who outstayed their visas in China were not aware of China's laws. Those who entered illegally mainly came from neighboring countries, and those who took jobs illegally were mainly working as teachers, performers, and housekeepers. While these numbers seem to show China is getting more and more popular as a destination for international migration, the United Nations Population Division presents a bigger picture. As of 2009, international migrants were still concentrated in a limited number of countries in Europe, North America, and Australia. Migrants in these countries took up 7 to 20 percent of their total population, whereas Chinese migrants account for less than 0.1 percent. While the number of foreign visitors and residents in China is growing significantly. China's current law on exit entry, which was passed in 1985, seems quite outdated. Because of this, the State Council submitted draft law to the National People's Congress for its first hearing in December 2011. The NPC just had its second hearing this April. Lawmakers added a number of items in the draft. 
For example, foreigners entering China are required to provide their biometric data. Need to get a residence permit if staying in China for longer than 180 days. The draft law made specific regulations on the three illegals, referring to those who live, work, and travel in China illegally. Lawmakers also added green cards or provisions for permanent residents to the statute by specifying the criteria one has to meet. We've looked at foreign visitors in China from social, historical, and legal perspectives. But what do all these numbers mean? Are foreigners willing to risk illegal residence in China to pursue job and business opportunities? If so, is that a symbol of China's rise as a land of opportunity? We quote Liu Guofu from our studio. He is a scholar on immigration law and took part in the NPC's legislation process as a consultant. Liu 老师，我听到一种说法是，三非外国人日益增多。也反映了中国逐渐崛起，成为机会的土壤。那么您对这个观点怎么看？他这个说应该说对了一一半，我觉得。那我们来中国肯定是因为中国的机会多，他愿意来，这是一方面。所以我觉得这一点的说是对的，就是基础大了，产生问题的可能也大了，这产生问题就多起来了。另外一方面，我觉得还是很更重要的，是什么呢？就是我们对外国人的观点还是没跟上。这个逻辑是什么？你并不是说外国人来的话就一定会出现三费。怎么讲呢？没跟上。这个非法入境为什么有很多非法入境？我比如说你边检的问边检的问题，还有一个，他为什么能够敢于非法滞留呢？他不知道他签证到期日是什么时候吗？他既然知道他敢于违法，就说明了什么？那也说明我们管理有问题。那反过来就说你的处罚可能是不到位的，或者说你的查处是不全面的，他有侥幸的心理。那您认为我们国家对外国人来华的政策近十年来有什么变化？应该讲，应该在不断的放松了。零八年有一个引进海外高层的人才签证计划，是中组部牵头的，就是办法给海外外高层的外国人很多特殊的待遇，出境的便利，永久居留的便利，包括在华生活的便利，甚至零四年还有一个外国在华永久居留管理办法，允许他们申请永久居留，刚才取了几个法规的例子。另外一个是三非的打击，广东、北京在做，其实在之前像广东啊、浙江他们都做过呀。北京好像也不是第一次。那您认为我们国家对外国人来华的政策，未来会向什么方向发展？移民的法或者移民政策的一个主要目的就是欢迎能为本国做出贡献的人。你能为我们国家做出贡献，我就欢迎你来；你做不了贡献，你甚至还是海军芝麻就就反对你来。简单的讲是这个意思。因为人流动，它可以流向中国，也可以流向日本，也可以流向台湾地区，它和国家的相竞争。不断的在发展和变化的，它是个弹性的，一种竞争性的一种法律制度，就不能简单的要门槛高或者门槛低，能不能设计出或者说制定出更精巧的、更完善的法律制度，去吸引我们需要的能为本国做出经济自由发展贡献的外国人，而且也能够制定出精巧的、很严密的法律制度去堵住那些我们不欢迎的人进来，这个促进入境管理法的应该是它它的宗旨。那从打击三非外国人这个事，我们看到更深层次一个问题，那就是怎样对待来华的外国人。那么对这个问题，您有什么看法？人员的跨国流动啊，它是有一定的规律的。越发达的国家，这个国际人口的流动是越频繁，然后在本国的比例越高。发达地区的百分之十、百分之十五啊，尤其北欧现在百分之二十，北京现在百分之一还不到。所以远远落后于发达国家，所以他们是有些规律的。你这个法的目的就是让这个调整符合这个人员国际流动的规律。比如说那些外国人想到中国来，中国的发展，你就不能硬着赌，这就违反了这个人口流动的规律。该欢迎的还是给他更多的渠道，给他更多的方式让他进来。不该进来的，那一定要严给他。衡量一个国家的现代化、国际化，应该很多个指标。国际移民应该是其中的一个指标，因为国际流动它是一个人的流动，人的流动的话呢，会让整个社会活起来，它输入了新的资本。新的技术、新的思想，然后会激活原有的技术、资本和思想，让他们进行碰撞，产生新的东西。如果一个地区永远是本土的人，这个这个地区一定是保守和落后的。好的，谢谢您。Uh, actually, I'm studying Chinese in、uh, in the school, so that was where I got information. Like we were told to bring all the documents with us and. That's what I heard. 我们家之前住了一个外国人，他是哥伦比亚人
，但是他在中国待着的，然后他就是签证过期一年多了，但是他一直没有向大使馆申报，所以呢，然后就警察，然后还找到我们家，然后就说，就说这是就是非法。